Okay, my friends, glad to see you on my channel. So smartphone gimbals have come a long way and there are many out there on the market. If you film a lot of videos with your smartphone, then having a gimbal is necessary for achieving smooth looking videos. Now, another deciding factor for a lot of people is not only the ability to capture stabilized footage, but also have a quick setup. You want to be able to capture moments as quickly as possible and have it ready when needed. With the brand new release of the DJI OM4, the magnetic attachment system makes it possible. In this video, I will show you how you can use the OM4 to your advantage to shoot cinematic video and we are going to cover a lot. So before we start, this video was not sponsored by DJI, even though that would have been awesome. I actually borrowed the OM4 from a good friend from George Paolo. You might know him from the previous videos. To give you an idea, we're going to start with a quick overview of the gimbal, the built and design quality, how to mount and balance your phone on the gimbal, the basic button functions, some special features that the DJI MIMO app offers, shooting modes to get more dynamic shots, my top camera settings for shooting video, and a behind the scenes of how I shot that video using a different operator modes on the gimbal. A timestamp will be in the video description below if you want to skip or return to a particular part of the video. Hope that sounds good for you and if it does, get ready to become the ultimate gimbal master. Okay, let's get on with the video. So here's a quick overview of the gimbal. We have the magnetic phone clamp that allows you to easily attach your smartphone. You have your joystick that will help control the direction, a zoom slider to change zoom, obviously, <laughs> a charging port to charge the gimbal by connecting it using a USB adapter, a power M button to power your gimbal on and off, including other functions. Then you have the shutter record button for taking photos or start and stop recording recording, a battery level indicator, a one quarter screw mount that allows you to attach a tripod or other accessories. You have a small screw hole for mounting counterweights when using a camera lens. You also have a trigger to enter different modes and a USB-A port, which is great for charging your smartphone. DJI also did a great job on the button design. Not too many, which makes it simple to use. Let's move over to the build and design quality. If you had the previous model of the OM3, they're virtually the same in terms of dimension, folding system, buttons, and port. It's a little bit lighter than the OM3 and also has a new gray color, which I really like. The main difference is obviously the new magnetic connection for the smartphone. You get a magnetic phone clamp and a magnetic ring holder that allows you to mount it on the DJI OM4. On the DJI OM3, you had a smartphone holder, which was less convenient to use. With the magnetic system, it definitely improves the usability. When holding the gimbal, it feels lightweight, ergonomic, and could easily fit into my pocket. It takes about 2.5 hours to charge the gimbal and runs at around 15 hours if balanced correctly. What I really like is that I'm able to charge my smartphone while operating the gimbal. Now shooting video drains the battery quickly, especially on smartphones. So having this charging option is really great to be able to shoot longer. Okay, let's move on to mounting and balancing. From what I've seen, mobile filmmakers prefer using the magnetic phone clamp over the magnetic ring holder. I myself too. Since I borrowed this gimbal, I will just show you how to set up the magnetic phone clamp. 
To do so, attach it to the center of the phone. Make sure that the direction is the same as shown. Once you have that, align it with the magnetic point. Your smartphone will snap to the OM4. You will realize that the attraction is pretty strong, like my attraction to you. Okay. While also being easy to detach it comfortably. Press and hold the M button to turn it on and you're ready to go. The simplicity of this mounting system is what stands above all the other smartphone gimbals, which I personally really love. All right, let's look at the basic functions of this gimbal. The first thing is that you can not only adjust the direction of your smartphone with the joystick, but also with your hand. When you turn your gimbal on, by default, it will be in follow mode, which I prefer when shooting my videos. Now keep in mind that you can connect your smartphone with the gimbal via Bluetooth and use it to control your standard camera without having to use the DJI MIMO app. Though if you want more control over your camera, then the MIMO app might be a better choice, but we will get into that later. So continuing with our basic functions. When turned off, you can press the M button once to check your battery level. I do that every time before I start shooting. When powered on, you can press the M button once to switch between photo and video mode. Pressing it twice will switch between landscape and portrait mode, but for video, I generally leave it in landscape mode unless it's a video for my Instagram stories. Move the zoom slider to the T position to zoom in. Move the zoom slider to the V position will zoom out. Press and hold the trigger to enter lock mode. This way the gimbal will stay at its position and not follow your hand movements. Press the trigger twice to recenter the gimbal. Pressing it three times will switch between the front and back camera. Okay, let's get into the special features of the MIMO app. In order to get access to all of the features that the OM4 has, you will need to download the DJI MIMO app. Once you did that, you can connect your smartphone with the app via Bluetooth. This gimbal offers a lot of great features that can be really helpful for getting creative shots. Now let's quickly take a look at those special features. Active track simply allows you to track a subject. This is great for having your subject remain in the center of the camera while shooting. There are three ways you can use active track. The first one would be dragging a green box on a subject or object on the screen in the camera view. I find it does a great job of tracking the subject smoothly. To stop active track, just tap the X icon on the upper right square. The second way is to press the trigger once to start or stop active track. It will simply detect the nearest face and start tracking the subject. The third option is using gesture control. To enter it, tap the hand icon below the recording button. By performing a palm or V gesture, the camera will track the subject and start recording a video or take a photo. If you want to stop recording, just do either one of those hand gestures again. This is really great if you are filming yourself. For vloggers, this might be a useful feature since active track will keep the subject in the frame. Moving on to story mode, this allows you to record a video using different templates. You can enter it by selecting the S icon, then just follow the instructions. In the end, it will automatically create a video for you according to the template you've selected. Now, I don't use this mode at all since I have my own style of creating videos, but for those that need to post something really quickly on social media or don't have much experience with editing a video, this is a great option. With the hyperlapse mode, I'm able to create moving time lapses. Now, there are different ways to creating hyperlapses with your smartphone, but the easiest way is to use a gimbal and with active track enabled, I get even smoother results. If you want to find out more on shooting hyperlapses with a smartphone, I have a video on that that you can check out here somewhere. With FPV mode, the gimbal will allow you for pan, tilt, and roll follow to give you that first person view experience. With the spin shot, you're able to use the joystick to control the roll to create an inception effect. This allows the lens to rotate and gives the scene a feel of changing space and atmosphere. Enabling sport mode will increase the follow speed immensely. This is great for shooting subjects with sudden movements. All right, so now I'm gonna show you my camera settings using the DJI MIMO app. For that, you need to download the app and then open it up and connect it to your smartphone. And we're currently looking at our live viewer. If you wanna get back to the home screen, just press the upper left uh, house icon 
and you'll get back. And if you want to switch to the live view mode, just press the camera button. Let me explain to you what each icon means. So the upper right shows you the battery level of the gimbal. Then you have the battery level of your phone and you have the flash indicator, which is currently off and the current gimbal mode. So it's actually in follow mode at the moment. To the right, you have story mode. On the upper right, you can switch between the front and back camera. You also have your shooting parameters, so you can switch between slow motion, dynamic zoom, and so on. Below, you have the zoom icon. I don't use this, actually. I prefer using it on the gimbal, but what I use it for is to switch between lenses. So I can just press on these white dots. This way I can easily switch. So if you wanna change shooting modes, you'll find this here and then go to this icon and then change follow mode here. To the right, you will find this hand icon. Here you can enable gesture control. So let me now show you what camera settings I used. So first of all, switch to video if you haven't, then we're gonna set everything to manual. We want full control over our camera. I'm gonna keep my ISO as low as possible. Because I will shoot in 4K 60 frames per second, I will leave my shutter at one over 125 of a second. Below you have the exposure value. And to change your resolution, just tap the icon below and we're gonna go for 4K 60 frames per second. The next thing you wanna do is set your white balance. So I'm gonna tap on the three dots and then I'm gonna select white balance to sunny, depending on the weather outside. What you also wanna do is turn on grid lines. I like the grid line and diagonals. This way I can set my composition. And if you wanna switch your gimbal to sport mode, you can do this by selecting this button right here. Yeah, and that's about it. So let me now show you how I shot uh, the video using this gimbal. To get the best results, make sure to walk heel to toe with your knee slightly bent. This will help smoothen out the video even more. This way you will avoid robotic movements that look unnatural. The great thing about having a gimbal is that you can operate it in different ways to get unique shots, which otherwise wouldn't be possible when shot handheld. Now, if you want to know more about cinematic gimbal movements, this is a topic for itself. I have an in-depth topic on that, which is on my playlist. Here are three simple operating modes that you can use to your advantage. The upright mode is the one I use most often where I keep the gimbal upright. This is great for following the subject. To enter the side grip mode, just rotate the handle 90 degrees to the right or left. This is great for creating a crane shot where you start from a lower position and work your way up to the top. <sighs> Okay, we almost made it. With underslung mode, I can put the gimbal upside down, which allows me to capture shots from a lower angle, giving the story more depth. When inverting the gimbal, I notice the phone rotating, which is great. This way I don't have the motors in the shot. The OM4 is really affordable if you plan on picking one up. The OM4 will cost you $149. After using this gimbal, I can say that the magnetic mounting system helps me be more efficient when filming. This is super great because now I can easily take out my phone, snap it onto my gimbal and capture smooth looking videos in just a few seconds. That snappy sound is like music in my ears. And I really had no problems using the magnetic phone clamp and at no point did it fall off the gimbal. I also like the fact that it's compatible with Filmic Pro, which is one of the best video apps out there for smartphones. I recommend the OM4 to any video creator that wants to make videos with their smartphone. Now let me know what you think about the OM4. If you like this video and found it helpful, then leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so that I can keep creating awesome tutorials for you guys. And if you want to dive in deeper into mobile filmmaking, make sure to check out these two videos right here. <laughs> that will help you create even better videos. Until then, have a great day, take care, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.